In this video, we're going to look at downloading data from an AIM Solo 2. Now, this download experience is also applicable to many of the latest uh, AIM devices, but today we're going to focus on um, a Wi-Fi enabled uh, AIM Solo 2. So I have it switched on and it's ready to go. So uh, I'm going to uh, start the process of downloading. So first thing we need to do is we need to click up here uh, to Wi-Fi and we need to find the device itself. And so uh, you can see down here uh, that I have um, the AIM Solo 2 in proximity of my PC and it's ready to go. I know it's mine because I've named it and anyone who's interested in how I did that and I set up the Solo 2, uh, please refer to the, uh, the, the link in the description below which will take you into uh, configuring a, a Solo 2 device. So I'm going to click on connect and I'm going to wait for uh, that to, uh, to, to connect. And once it is, uh, we'll be able to start working on downloading data uh, from the actual device itself. And so um, as it uh, works things out, you can see here that uh, uh, now we're connected. We can see that uh, it says connected here, which now gives us the opportunity of being able to connect to that actual device. And so we do that uh, by going up here to these two little arrows and it's going to click here and it's going to start looking at which devices uh, are available. So you can see that it says it's connecting to uh, AIM Solo um, uh, 2, that is mine. And uh, as it uh, establishes a connection, you can see that it now appears. I've got a really strong signal um, that's available here. You can see that if the signal's a little bit weaker, these bars would not all be populated. Um, and so it's ready to go. So I click on the device itself and it will show me all the information uh, that's available right now uh, for my uh, AIM Solo 2. So um, our previous videos, as referred, we've gone through in terms of setup. So the next thing we also need to do is to download data. Now, I've already downloaded this data, but what I've done is I've left a session or two on the device so I can demonstrate how to download. So I just click on the download tab here and it says no new files available, but I also anticipated that. So if I unhide what's downloaded, you can see that it's now demonstrating um, there's two uh, sessions that are available. If I click on any of these two and I click on this one here, now this uh, download uh, button here becomes an option. And if I click on that, now it's going to give me some options that I can go into. And so if you remember from the setup video, if you've watched that one again, reference it in the link below, we've already pre-populated uh, on the Solo 2 device, the racer, uh, the vehicle and the championship. Um, the track is found based upon the GPS track that the, the uh, device has found itself and then you can change the venue type. And so in here, we have different pieces of information that's available. So uh, interestingly, if you watch another video that we have, as you set up Race Studio 3, you can change what venue types show up based upon what kind of racing you're doing. I changed this one in the previous video to be able to demonstrate that uh, uh, typically in a race day that I race, there's qualifying and then there's two races. And so this was a qualifying session, I believe. And so I can click down here on qualifying. Uh, I can add any notes that I need to. Uh, just for purposes, I'll just say this is uh, for demonstration. And then I can click on OK. And then what it'll do is it'll show the data that is being downloaded. And as this is now downloaded, it's also being downloaded into the format that we told Race Studio 3 that we wanted to be able to see our file names uh, be created as. And so again, if you haven't watched that video, links below as to how to be able to set up Race Studio 3 to be able to work through downloading data as well. And so once you've done that, it's as simple as that. The um, session has been downloaded and now it's going to be available with all the download variables that you want in the file location that you need uh, in the instance of uh, Race Studio 3 uh, that we have here and so this is uh, this is interesting information um, as you uh, as you use uh, the system and hopefully uh, everyone gets uh, a chance to be able to use this now last thing is is that uh, this is also a great place to be able to go in and start deleting files um, one of the things that I generally see a lot is uh, when I plug in somebody's solo or connect via Wi-Fi there are thousands of sessions um, that are available uh, on the device itself. And so um, one of the things is nice to be able to clear out the memory once you don't need it. And so if you just click on any of the sessions or similarly, if you click on any of these buttons above, you can highlight everything. And as you do so, um, you can go in and you can uh, click on the delete button and it will delete that file 
um, from your particular device. So hopefully this is useful and it gives you the full transition with all three videos from setting up Ray Studio 3 for downloading data to configuring your Solo 2 so it's got variables that are present as you download through to the physical function of being able to download the actual data so that you can use it to be able to do analysis. And so um, you have more videos to follow. If there's anything that you'd like more information on, please comment below and uh, we'll work on being able to develop uh, those particular videos and information.